Hey there, kids. I was looking at the previous episode, and not only did I get the episode number wrong in the title sequence, but I noticed that pretty much every quotation that I read, I read it wrong. Why did I do that? Anyway, we're in a new episode now. It's called Lestragonians. Who are these Lestragonians in the Odyssey? So the, the ships that are floating around the Mediterranean, and Odysseus and his gang and a few other ships, they arrive at this island. It's this guy's, the Lestragonians. It's a people. But they seem like normal people at first, but in fact, they are cannibals. Dun, 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 dun. Ulysses escapes, obviously, but some of the people, they get eaten alive. Maybe not alive, maybe they're cooked. How is that relevant in Dublin in 1904? Are there cannibals in the city? I hope not. And how is that relevant in our modern world where there certainly are cannibals? <laughs> The answer is that in this chapter, maybe more than any other, we're going to see how the world of Dublin is a dog-eat-dog -dog world where people are suffering, people are hungry and uh, just trying to get by, and it seems like a, a dark world of like uh, just hunger and nature red in tooth and claw and things are just very vicious. Bloom's hungry for lunch, he's looking for a place to eat, and as he does this, he's going to encounter a woman that he used to know named Mrs. Breen. Uh, originally, her name was Josie Powell. He is going to be remembering a lot of things about his younger days when he and Molly were first married and getting to know each other. Increasingly, his mind is going to be thinking of that meeting that is going to be happening with Molly and Blazes Boylan at his home. So that's going to be keep coming up in his subconscious and he's going to keep suppressing and saying, no, I don't want to think about this. He's going to see some, uh, a lot of the city life and a lot of famous people. And he's going to try to eat at this restaurant called The Burton, but he's going to be um, disgusted. And he goes to another place, this pub called Davy Burns. It's still there, a pretty famous Dublin landmark. And then uh, he's going to head over to the museum. Actually, he's going to be heading to the library, but then he ends up going to the museum to avoid blazes boiling. But that's the general course of this chapter. You remember last chapter, he had been in the newspaper offices, and now he is going to be kind of in this area of town. I may not use a, every turn of the map um, in this episode just to get the idea across. I mean, these are uh, this is the general area that this takes place. So keep your eyes peeled for the uh, vicious cutthroat nature of the city life in this chapter. And also notice how Bloom maintains his sense of compassion. Let's take a little more detailed look now. The time is 1 p.m. So Bloom's hungry. And uh, remember last time he was at the newspaper offices. So he's going to begin almost right in that area. And typically for Joyce, it's going to have a fairly confusing opening sentence or two. Uh, he begins so I, like talking about these flavors, and you're like, what is he talking about? And the reason he's bringing up these flavors... These are flavors of candy because he's passing by a candy shop called Graham Lemons. Or actually, I think the real name was uh, Lemon & Co. Limited. The shop is no longer there, but... I think it now is a Foot Locker, but above the Foot Locker, you can see the sign, some of the signage still remains at the confectionery. I, I don't know what it said, the confection hall something. As Bloom is walking along, some guy hands him a flyer, another throwaway reference. This is for an advertisement for this religious revivalist coming Uh, going to be talking about Elijah and blood of the lamb and so on. But when he first looks at the flyer, he sees blood of the lamb, but he sees blue and he thinks, me? Bloom? And I think that's uh, this phenomenon of hearing our name or seeing our name in things. I think it really works. Like when I hear somebody say like, I'm going to add them together or add them together, I hear my name. My, my ears are almost finely tuned to hear my name more than other things. Bloom will not be attending this uh, lecture 
As he walks on further, he passes by the auction rooms that he went to earlier in the last chapter to meet uh, Alexander Keyes and arrange that deal. He sees outside the auction rooms one of Stephen Dedalus's sisters, Dilly Dedalus, I think her name is. This is Simon Dedalus's daughter, who has quite a few daughters. And uh, she looks pretty, uh, pretty horrible because since the mothers died, I guess the family has pretty much fallen to ruin. She just looks like she's wearing a really tattered dress and looks kind of hungry and just not very good looking. A lot of the people in this chapter don't look that well and what it reminds me of kind of is when you go out in public nowadays, uh, compared to the things that we see on TV and the internet, when you go into like a store nowadays, people just look kind of not like models at all. In fact, they look almost worse than they used to, I think. Um, maybe that's not the case. I don't know how people looked a hundred years ago, really, but uh, they, they don't seem like they look that good nowadays compared to what we see and we're bombarded with in our media. I think the uh, candy, I think of it as like candy-coated imagery that we're constantly being fed. But anyways, Bloom takes that flyer that he got and he crumbles it into a ball. He throws it into the river, he's crossing over the Liffey River, and he thinks the birds might think it's food and go for it, but they don't. This throwaway, this uh, crumpled uh, flyer is actually going to show up, we're going to follow the course of it later, uh, I think in Wandering Rocks. Bloom thinks about Shakespeare a little, he thinks that uh, Shakespeare had no rhymes, which is of course not true, Shakespeare did employ rhymes sometimes. And um, I think along with his theory that uh, Hamlet may have been a woman, that's why Ophelia committed suicide, we can see that Bloom's knowledge of uh, Shakespeare compared to Stephen's in the next episode, uh, Scylla and Charybdis, you're going to see that Stephen is, has much more sophisticated ideas about literature and Shakespeare and maybe about life in general, but Bloom has more experience.